Hey everyone, your buddy and pal, Carnix, Serenity Wargaming and Explanations. We're back for what is essentially the final video. The final, well, I'll have one more video. I still need to cover like rapid reinforcement uh, squadrons. But this is like the final video, and it's going to be a long one because there are so many Delta 7 squadrons to cover because we're going to be covering, finally, the Delta 7 Aether Sprite Squadron. So, the Delta 7 Aether Spite Squadron is for the Republic. You can see that by their faction icon there next to the name. You can see the squadron icon in the bottom left-hand corner. Opposite side, you'll see its point cost. A hefty 17 points for a generic squadron. So, on par, similar with the TIE Defenders, but like, there are some other squadrons, and there's pros, there's cons. Um, let's get into it. So the Delta 7, if you look below its name, you'll see its bar reading from left to right. The first number there is 4, can move up the distance 4. It then has 4 hull value. Anti-squadron armament, really good with the 3 blue, 1 black. Again, like the perfect, in my opinion, is like double blue, double black. But hey, 3 blue with a black, that's still good. Uh, Anti-ship armament, weak at a single blue anti-ship die. However... Even though it's not Bomber, this is offset a little bit by one of its keywords. The three keywords it comes with is Adept 1, which is while attacking, you may reroll one die. It comes with Counter 2, and it has one of the new dodge er, new uh, new mechanics, which is Dodge, and it has Dodge 1, which is while you are defending against the squadron during the spend defense token steps, uh, you may choose one die to be rerolled. So, in a nutshell, what is the squadron good at? Why would you want to bring it compared to some of the other squadrons Republic has? And, uh, yeah, let's dive right in. So, excuse me. First thing I want to touch on is it's a little speedy, you know. it's uh, I believe it's the fastest squadron that they have that's generics. Yeah, because their other generics are all like speed 3, speed speed 2. So, it's the fastest, the fastest one that they have. Uh, it very much firmly sits in like that interceptor role. It has a you know a wing amount of health, uh, a wing amount of speed, or you know a little one speed less. But again, three blue. It's got that black die. Makes it a very reliable generic killer. But also, if you have to throw it at an ace, uh, chances are high you're gonna roll that accuracy to lock a scatter, brace, etc. And with adept one. You don't need to worry about like, oh, I have to put something else in there to get Swarm or, or any of that other nonsense. So that Adept 1, it's a, essentially, it's a built-in reroll. Now, if you were using something like Navuda B, which also grants Swarm, like, you could get, like, double rerolls of your Aether Sprites. Uh, however, as we'll get into it later, I don't think that necessarily is a combo maybe you, you want or don't want. But regardless... That built-in reroll is great. It's its own bomber command center when going up against ships. And yeah, even though the blue die, when you roll it, that chance is 50-50 of a damage. But with a reroll, that pretty much goes up to... Yeah, each each roll individually is 50-50. But if you roll like a critical icon or an accuracy, being able to just reroll it and then... you I mean, technically you have a higher chance of potentially rolling that hit die you know again each die take as individual face value of 50 50 chance but if you're trying to get that hit having that reroll means you're going to get that now granted this can still be countered by something with like pdic's or if they have evade or some other ability to make you reroll you know you can make you reroll out of that hit into non-damage but you know that's that's still just really good that, that, that built-in reroll and again Counter two is just like, oh, you want to, you want to shoot me? Well, not only do I punch you back with two blue die, it's hey, uh, re-roll one of your dice. Like, oh, you you roll the damage? Nah, re-roll re one of those. You can't block it. You can't accuracy. You can't negate it. Uh, it will always just get dodge one against squadrons, and that would have been really, really broken is if it could dodge ships and squadrons so i'm glad it's restricted to only defending against squadrons because against ships which can sometimes already have a tough time flacking like that just would have made them too powerful and their point cost would have drastically just gone through the roof too so aether sprites uh 
you you really don't see the generic versions because they're expensive and the aces are all expensive and in order to get like a good squad ball going on it's always that balance of the point cost of the aces versus the point cost of the generics and typically in armada you're wanting to shoot for that golden eight eight squadrons is really just kind of the, the really big sweet spot i mean you can go for 10 12 but then all you're bringing is just generics uh typically with gar you only get like maybe one ship or or two ships that can really push squadrons but then again like there's always that balance so it's like really eight is the best and you really want to balance between generics and aces and if you're already doing that you're already bringing expensive aces why waste points on an expensive generic because it's just going to lower your squadron count overall unless again you, you're wanting to just go pure like interceptor spam interceptor spamish kind of ships but it's just really hard to like kind of justify the aether sprite over the v19 v19 sure it's one speed slow but republic ships typically aren't wanting to go heckin fast because their nav charts are so bad uh I still feel like they're really good. The V19s, the double blue red, they get swarm, they get escort to protect your aces, they get the black die, which is, I feel like, still better than than a, a, a blue die, even with that blue die having a reroll. I don't know, they're just so much cheaper, too. <laughs> so it's just like, it's just really hard to look at a V19 and look at a Delta and be like, oh yeah, I totally want to bring some Deltas. I can see the case of bringing like one Delta or two Delta seven generic squadrons by themselves, but you would have a really hard time convincing me to bring why you're bringing more than that. Just because the other squadrons have such great value at much cheaper costs. Uh, so one thing I do like about the Delta sevens is you, you can throw one in first and then like bring in the rest of your V 19. So that way they're getting that swarm benefit and Typically with Delta 7s, you're going to find that they just get ignored. Uh, just because trying to shoot them is is just difficult. Yeah, they've got counter 2 in the dodge. Uh, but you... They're just... They're still not worth trying to deal with when you can just shoot at so many other targets and then just kind of deal with them last. Uh, typically, you want to force Deltas to engage like your own squadrons... Like, if you're attacking into a squadron ball, like, typically you want to try to force deltas to come under flak, because just like with anything else with the lower hull values, that flak just rips them apart. But, again, I'm not saying that they're not a great squadron. They're just really expensive. You have to be a little careful that they don't get overextended. And they're, they're great as kind of like that initial strike force when you have a few of them. I mean... They are good with, like, the Ahsoka Tano officer giving them snipe. So they are able to throw three blues. They've got the adept for the reroll. So, like, there, there's still, like, some value and things you can play around with them. But, again, don't bring a lot of them is, is the point ultimately I'm going to make. Is they're great in pairs. And I really think that just the two or maybe four generics at the very, very most. But, really, I think that sweet spot is two. And then you really have to convince yourself why am I bringing two generic Delta 7s and I'm not bringing like the the V19 Aces? Why am I not bringing something that's more survivable? Why not spend a few more points and get one of these Aces? So pros and cons of everything. So that's the Delta 7. Let's jump in. We're going to first talk about... Actually, I'm going to move Ahsoka. I want to talk about Ahsoka later. So we're going to move her down. Let's talk about Kit Fisto, one of the most expensive, yeah, the, one of the most expensive squadrons in the game. Uh, 26 points, woof. Uh, Kit Fisto, if you're looking for the name, you'll see a little dot and bullet points signifies they are unique. You can only bring one. Uh, they come with the same bar. They are a double brace ace. So they lose uh, the dodge mechanic, but they have a depth two counter to and intel so i can make you know the, the higher point cost is because kit comes with fisto and they are one of the hardest most difficult toughest things in the game with that adept to counter to intel but it's their card effect that just makes them really hard to just kind of like focus down which reads when you spend a defense token you may discard it if you do 
reduce the total damage by three instead of resolving the token's effect. So in a nutshell, you supercharge your brace. And because typically, for example, if an enemy throws four damage at you and you use brace, you cut that damage in half. So that damage goes from four to two. However, if you spend, you can also then just kind of like how that uh, 1.5 of A, which is you spend and then you say, aha, I all also now choose to discard it or you may discard it. Uh, you can then reduce damage by three. So that goes from four to one damage. And so it's great when Kit Fisto has like already exhausted braces, you can just chuck away anyway. Because again, when you spend the token, you can stop and say, up, oh, I also, I'm discarding it. You know, even though you're in the process of spending it, it's still a timing window before it actually is poof gone. Uh, you can just be like flat out like, nope, it's gone. And I reduce the damage by three. And it just, man, it just is tough to pour enough fire to bring them down without having to throw four, five, six squadrons at Kit Fisto. They will just last forever, especially if they're obstructed. If they're obstructed, just good luck. Like, it's just really hard because it takes your four die if you're rolling four damage. Okay, minus one for obstruction. Uh, and then and then you shoot them for three damage and they throw the brace away and you do nothing. You do nothing to them. So, survivability... They're getting the Adept 2 for the attack, the Adept 2 for their counter, and they're providing intel, which gives, you know, grit. Which grit is is really good. It's just really good for squadrons, especially, like, for your arcs or your Y-wings, just to be able to kind of pop around, get where they want. Or even just your V-19s in general, it's just, kit is good. But again, being so expensive, it, it comes back down to, what are you trying to accomplish? And if you're already bringing... A large squadron ball that would benefit from intel. Why are you not just spending points on a squadron ball that can just nuke the enemy squadron ball into oblivion? And then you don't have to worry about having grit because you just killed the enemy. So it's just you got to have a fine balance there. So Kit, uh, good in that aspect. Hard to kill, has intel. Great squadron, just expensive. Got to really analyze what position they're fitting into. Okay, let's talk about Luminara and Dolly. Again, unique bullet point in front of their name. Uh, they do have a commander card version. So you, like any cards that share the same character, you can bring the commander or you can bring the squadron. You can't bring both. They have the same stats uh, as, a, uh, as a normal Aether Sprite, you know, for the, for the bar here. They're 23 points. This one, though, is Brace Scatter compared to Kit's Double Brace. Uh, Kit is the only one that, in fact, yeah, looking at everybody, is the only one that does not get Scatter. And and for good reason, because they have the intel. So, okay. So they... Luminari has Adept 1 and Counter 2. No dodge. Their Adept is, again, just the singular. But their card effect reads... While an enemy squadron at distance 1 is attacking a non-unique friendly squadron, that attack is treated as obstructed. In a nutshell, you're providing a cloud of obstruction for all of your non-unique squadrons. So think of it kind of very similar to like Jan for the Rebels. Instead of Jan reducing damage after the fact, Luminar is trying to reduce damage before the action happens. So you really want to pair Luminara with V19s because of all the escort. And V19s uh, have, you know, five hull value. They're tanky. Uh, they're just, you get a lot of synergy there between Luminara and V19s. Again, this does not work for unique squadrons. So you're going to see your unique squadrons getting just blasted down first unless they're being covered by escort from V19s. Uh, so again, like it just it kind of creates just this layer of um, intricacy that your opponent has to be aware of, but also on the flip side, you kind of have to make sure that you're putting Luminara in a position to get the most benefit from them. And again, that's at distance one compared to some other effects, which is usually like that distance one to two range. This is a lot more limited, a lot less squadrons get that benefit. But if you can get them just just right, uh, it just can be devastating to an enemy squadron ball. So Luminara, really like. And even when you finally blast away all their escorts and start shooting at them, yeah, Adept 1, Counter 2, 
a scatter for hole. Uh, it's still going to take you a little bit to chew through them. All right. Plukoon. Plukoon, again, is another commander squadron uh, card. If you look in front of the name, you'll see the little dot or bullet point. And then same same stats across the board there. They're 24 points. Brace Scatter. They, ha they have Adept 2, Counter 2, no dodge. Their card effect reads, Non-unique, friendly squadrons without counter at distance 1, gain counter 1. So you really see a lot of squadron balls built around just V19s, Luminara, and Plo. And they'll just sit in the middle with just a wall of V19s around them, and the V19s will just start blasting because now you're trying to attack them, they're obstructed. They're shooting back at you now because they have counter, and they have swarm, so they get rerolls. It's just like it can compound. So you really kind of have to watch out for that mass wall of V19s with these two squadrons because they will just bog enemy ball squadron balls down and they will just start really ripping and tearing into you. So you you kind of have to approach it like a hedgehog. It's spiky. It's more spiky than the Rebels. But the, this is the way I like to compare it. The Rebel squadron ball with like Bigs and Jan and X-Wings and all that, that's not like a spiky hedgehog that's hurting you as you attack it. Think of it like a tortoise. It's just so tough to chew into that shell to get to the meaty goody bits inside that's jan ors think of this squadron ball gar as it's a spiky hedgehog or porcupine where you're trying to hurt it but ow that really hurts punching it and it's hurting punching you back at the same time you're trying to hit it it's hitting you and that's gar in a nutshell when you see that combination of luminar and plo and v19s it's just like ow why am i hurting myself and then like i've played empire and or cis and you just watch your three whole generic squadrons just evaporate very very quickly because of the counter because they're taking you know, they're taking damage back from the counter and they're obstructed, so they're rolling less damage. And it's just like, oh, it's just tough. It can be tough to chew through a guard ball. But again, there's pros and cons to that. The guard squadron's right. They're slower. They're, uh, they're not able to conduct necessarily like that first strike initiative that you'll see like with Empire or CIS. So there, there's all these pros and cons and different mechanics swinging back and forth. One thing I want to point out, or actually... So there's an interaction with Plo that's attached to Anakin Skywalker in the Delta 7. We'll save that for Anakin because Anakin is going to be... We're going to spend a long time on Anakin and for good reason. So we're going to go ahead and just skip over the interaction that's a clarification from the rules form. We're going to just save that for Anakin and the Delta 7. We're going to go straight on to Ahsoka Tano. Ahsoka Tano, dot bullet point in front of their name signifies they're unique. They have an officer version. So again... You can choose to bring the squadron or the officer, not both. Same squadron stats, 23 points, brace scatter. They have a depth one, they have counter two. Interestingly enough, they have grit as an additional keyword. Uh, so that's, uh, I think I would have preferred to have seen counter, or not counter, dodge, but grit. You know, you, you can't ever be mad about grit. What is their card effect? It's a good one. I like it. After you move, you may choose another friendly squadron at distance one. That squadron performs an attack against an enemy squadron at distance one with an anti-squadron armament of two blue die, even if it's already activated. In a nutshell, what does this mean? If you move to Soka, if there's another friendly squadron at distance one, you say, I'm choosing this squadron, and this squadron can then attack an enemy squadron if it's at distance one of that enemy of the friendly squadron you chose. You can shoot at them with, with two blue dice. And that is just that's still that's that's strong. Anything that's in the game that's giving you additional attacks or attacking power is always gonna be beneficial because you're gonna slowly wear down anything that's in front of you, whether that be a generic or especially against double brace aces, because double brace aces, if you're even if you even if you throw two damage, like are they gonna brace that? And if they brace that, okay, they spent the brace, or they've already been attacked, they have to chuck away a brace to renegate one damage. Or even if you just roll one damage, you're just plinking away. Because the thing about brace double brace aces, it's all about just plinking them, plinking them to death. 
and just slowly reducing that health pool to where braces don't even matter. Because once they get down to to one health, all you have to do is roll two damage. If they get down to two health, uh, there's cases where if you have the ability to roll five damage, you don't need to worry about getting accuracies because you'll just flat out kill them. Because even after they brace from five, it's still three damage and they're dead. So it's just they they really hate that that plink plinkity plink plink stuff. So in this situation, what I love to do is yeah, you you'll throw in another squadron at like an ace, plink them for that. You bring in Ahsoka. You have Ahsoka toggle their ability to have that squadron that just attacked attack again, plink in another damage, and then Ahsoka follows up, plinks in more. Sometimes I've had that three squadron combination. Just or I say three squadrons, it's two squadrons, but three attacks just by itself is enough to eliminate quite a few aces in this game, depending on how well your rolls go. And you're gonna especially see this combination with Ahsoka and Anakin in the Delta 7. And I will I will get to that. Because I'm gonna spend a lot of time on Anakin Skywalker in the Delta 7. But for Ahsoka, always note that it states after you move. Okay, so this doesn't mean if you do like a deployment or if you place them because they got overlap, placement is not movement. Okay, this is, I've seen this misplayed. We're like, oh, you have left Ahsoka. So now I place them next to the squadron. Now the squadron gets to attack because Ahsoka moved. It's like, no, Ahsoka did not move. They were placed. There's, there's clear distinction and separation for that. I've seen some people use fighter coordination teams and like flight commander to like bump Ahsoka closer to a squadron so it can shoot and then they will activate Ahsoka they will move then that squadron shoots again and then Ahsoka shoots so like you can get uh, a, like essentially a double double attack out of that uh, you know another friendly squadron with Ahsoka if you're using uh, fighter coordination teams or if you're able to keep Ahsoka free and clear of enemies engaging Ahsoka and if you have multiple fighter coordination teams you can you can proc that several times in in one go around that's a little bit more difficult though for guard to accomplish because the only like you could do it with consular class cruisers i guess uh again that's just like it seems like it's really hard to crowd that many kind of multiple small ships to accomplish that you could do it with peltas so it's just peltas the victory or the consulaires and I'd say the victory is like you definitely get the most bang for buck value because you're pushing three squadrons with fighter coordination teams, which is good. While everything else, it's it's not so good except maybe on the medical frigate. And even then, it's just kind of like guard doesn't really seem to be all about that F FCT push compared to rebels. But you could you could get some kind of uh, mechanic going there for that. But Ahsoka. Even if you're only just getting the activation and just it, it's still incredible value for Ahsoka. And yeah, again, cheaper point cost, good squadron overall. And this is where you, again, you come into like, why are you bringing Delta 7s over just bringing like Ahsoka, Luminara, and just more V19s uh, for the beefy hole, hole points and making them spiky hedgehog porcupine. So that's Ahsoka. Again, for Ahsoka, I know I covered this with Oddball. I'm going to cover it again here. Some folks had a question about how does Ahsoka interact with Oddball. Uh, so you can either go watch my uh, the uh, ARC 170s because it's a shorter video and you can see the interaction I explained with Oddball. But again, it's up here on the screen. You can pause the video. You can read it for yourselves. In a nutshell, uh, the interaction between Ahsoka and Oddball with fight coordination teams is all about, again, whom's activation it is when you're attempting to do Ahsoka with Oddball. Because Oddball is the, if they attack, they have the ability, or excuse me, yeah, if they attack, they have the ability to reroll their dice if they had already moved that round. Again, there's a, there's a chain of events where you can get that through fighter coordination teams. It just all depends on the order of operations, how you move stuff. Again, it's long. Go watch the ARC 170s and Oddball there. I'm not going to go much more into that. Let's talk about the, the best squadron maybe in the game. I don't know. Definitely the best squadron for Gar. And this Anakin Skywalker came out with rapid reinforcements. And that was a product that I was able to directly be involved with. And I was just so, so happy 
that we had the opportunity to bring Anakin Skywalker as a squadron in a Delta 7. Because we had the Y-Wing version. And the Y-Wing version was like, yeah, this is all right. But Gar, I'm not going to touch too too much on like development process, stuff like that. But if you had a, been a Gar player before Rapid Reinforcements 1, the general consensus was Gar squadrons are good, but they kind of suffer from like you want things to come attack you and then if they don't you just kind of sit there not doing anything they didn't really have the ability to like kind of punch out and force engagement because of how reliant they were on just kind of slowly moving into place like i said before the hedgehog analogy porcupine analogy they really wanted stuff to come hit them and if that didn't happen, they didn't really have the ability to kind of punch out of their hedgehog ball into other stuff and then kind of reform as a new hedgehog in a new position until we got Anakin Skywalker. Now, Anakin Skywalker, again, daughter bullet point in front of their name. You can either bring them or their Y-Wing variant. You can't bring both. They are 24 points. Uh, the adjustment that they have in their bar, so again, their speed four, four hold, but they get that awesome, awesome double blue, double black, and their anti-squadron armament is a black die. So even though they don't have bomber, like they just, you know, they're going to consistently deal damage because again, they have the keywords, they have adept two, counter two, dodge one. So like that black die, like if it, if it shows up a blank trying to shoot at an enemy ship, from your initial role and the adept role it's like it just the force that was just not meant to be and again you shoot anakin he punches you back with counter two and adept two re-rolled and even when you try to shoot anakin they've got brace they've got scatter and they have dodge and it's just they're so hard to bring down without taking an effect into account like what their card effect does like just all this by themselves is just he's an offensive powerhouse just with that he, he wants to go out and hit things and the reason why he wants to go out and hit things is because of the card effect. While attacking a squadron during your activation, which means Anakin's the squadron's activation, at the end of the resolve damage step, you may choose up to two enemy squadrons at distance one of the defender. If the defender was damaged, the chosen squadrons suffer one damage. So... Is this as powerful, for example, as like Mauler Mythos ability where they where they jump in and splash in the middle of a bunch of squadrons and deal one damage to everything that they are engaged with? Maybe not as strong as that, but th their ability to deal massive amounts of damage to whatever it is they are trying to blow up uh, is overwhelming. So they jump in, they throw their two blue, two black, and as long as you're throwing damage... Some kind of damage is getting in. You can then say, okay, uh, you're going to be, you're suffering one damage. So now I get to choose two squadrons. And you can choose the same squadron that's already taking damage. You don't have to choose two separate ones. Because it just says, at distance one of the defender. It doesn't say, you know, other squadrons at distance one of the defender. So you can choose the defender, choose one of the squadron. And you can, you can smack them both again for a single damage each. And against scatter aces that only have three hole to start with, uh, Anakin will blow up three three hole scatter aces all on their own sometimes, just in, in one go. If they roll double blue accuracy and double damage, okay, so that's from three health to two, and then they do their ability, and then they just blow up. So Anakin is, is murder. They are just straight up murder. They will murder your entire squadron ball if you do not have a way to negate or suddenly just take Anakin out. And, and, and like I said, for Gar, before Anakin came along, they didn't have an offensive powerhouse to accomplish, like actually getting out and hitting their opponents. And now they do. And Anakin is just, yeah, very strong, maybe a bit too strong, you know, at full disclosure. It, it definitely seems like, you know, after they've been out now for so long that there are some minor adjustments that probably could be done to help bring them a little bit more in line with with power but at the end of the day it's something that gar needed personal opinion was they needed something to that effect and anakin accomplishes that and there's, that's what makes anakin just so good so how does anakin work with some of the other squadrons here one thing i want to point out with ahsoka tano is that anakin skywalker's card effect 
does not work with Ahsoka Tano's card effect. Again, it all comes down to the 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 essential wording, you know, while attacking a squadron during your activation. So it, even though Ahsoka will roll up and choose Anakin to roll and deal attack damage, which is still really good because they have a depth two, they can re-roll. Um, you will not be able to trigger Anakin's card effect. So you can't do that. Uh, because can it's only during Anakin's activation can they use their card effect. That's I, I will go ahead and say it. That was intentional. Uh, that combination just would have made Anakin way, way, way too good, right? So as it is right now, that's still a good combination. Because yeah, chuck Anakin in, punch something in the face, deal a damage. Here comes Ahsoka. Did you not kill what you're shooting at before? Uh, Anakin is now going to hit it again for some more damage. And I've seen, again, like four whole scatter aces go down just between Anakin and Ahsoka. And then even if Anakin doesn't get it in two, then Ahsoka is there just to finish the mop up. And you will lose an ace. Guarantee you will lose an ace unless you just have terrible, terrible dice luck and you just roll no damages at all. Okay, more, more Anakin Skywalker things. Let's talk about some of the clarification we've gotten. So Anakin versus Big Dark Lighter. So if Anakin is attacking a squadron and Big Dark Lighter ability causes that squadron to take zero damage from the attack by putting it on another squadron, does Anakin's ability still happen? Uh, the answer to that is no. Anakin's ability would not resolve as the defending squadron did not suffer any damage. This is very similar to how Dutch interacts with, with Big Dark Lighter. Is that, okay, did you deal any damage? No, then the card effect does not happen. Uh, some bonus answers. If conditions are met, the Big Dark Lighter ability can be resolved against damage dealt by Anakin Skywalker's Delta 7 ability. So when you're going up against Big Dark Lighter, just know that you know the damage that they suffer from Anakin's attack, one damage can be moved by Biggs. And then if Anakin goes to use their card effect damage on that same target, Biggs can also move that damage, okay? Again, if the if the conditions for are there enough escort squadrons around, you can move damage to, etc. So Biggs kind of soft counters Anakin, Anakin's punching ability just a little bit, just just a smidgen, you know. Okay, another clarification is: Can Anakin's ability be used against the target, the original defender, as it would be a range one of itself? Again, yes, that is correct. You know, you can you can target the defender not only for Anakin's attack but for their card effect, as I mentioned before. And then the final one, getting back to the Anakin Plo Koon, uh, Anakin attacked a non-unique squadron at distance one uh, of an enemy of Plo Koon. Due to Anakin dealing damage to an enemy squadron, destroying it, Anakin dealt one damage to Plo Koon, killing him. Does the enemy non-unique squadron at distance one of Plo Koon get to counterattack on Anakin? And no, because Plo Koon... Uh, when something is destroyed, it's immediately destroyed unless something otherwise is keeping it on the board, which means its effect is no longer on the board, which means it's gone. So what does this mean? Again, in a nutshell, so let's say that there's a V-19 at one health and Plo Koon at one health. Anakin flies up, shoots at the V-19. It's going to take a damage. It's going to be blowing up. And then Anakin gets to resolve the card effect. They see Plo Koon at one health. They choose them to suffer one damage. And then they explode because the attack is not over. Because even though it's at the, um, what did I say, the end, yeah, at the end of resolve damage step, that does not mean that you're done with the attack. You're still in the attack. So by blowing up Plo Koon, that toggles off the counter radius. Counter is gone. So even though the V19 had counter to start with, by the time that the attack is over and finished, counter is no longer there. And counter only resolves after an attack. So wanted to make sure I was being clear pointing that out so in, in that situation yeah you can you can flip that counter off as long as Plo Koon is dying um in in that regard so there we go we got through all the Delta 7s been going for half hour over half hour like I said there was just a lot here so many squadrons to cover but those are the Delta 7s and I just see a lot of value with just bringing you know Anakin Ahsoka and, I mean, the current, like, meta thing is Anakin, Ahsoka, Axe, Kickback. Like, those four by themselves with some V-19s, or if you do want to mix some Y-Wings in there, um, they're tough. They're strong, especially backed up by if you are bringing, like, Naboo to B to get more rerolls or flight controllers, or if you're bringing Ahsoka for Snipe, or if you want to go the route of, 
uh, not Navuda B. If you wanted to go just for more like, haha, it's really hard to kill my squadrons, you get Implacable. So like you try to shoot Anakin and then it doesn't matter because Implacable. <laughs> but then it doesn't matter because there's Implacable and you can't shoot. I mean, you can shoot Anakin, but then they just reduce the damage Anakin can take or V19 or, or, or anything. So it's just, uh, you can combine that again, like if you're bringing somebody like Yarlan, which is able to just start <laughs> fixing back up those squadrons, you're going to have a hard time if you've not run into this combo before. Uh, it's not impossible to beat, but it can be a little frustrating to play against if you're not ready for it. But that is the Delta 7s, and I appreciate you guys sticking out this video. Hopefully you learned something from it. I know it's long. We've got one more video I'm going to do where I'm going to cover Harrison Dula and the Darth Vader from Rapid Reinforcements 1. But other than that, thank you so much for watching, and hey, I'll catch you next time.